Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Sunday. Um, I am. I, I like to think that um, I give you something different here with the Joe Boo Sports Report. I like to look deep, okay? I am in my... my personal life and um, what I've done all my life as far as construction work and things has been a problem solver, okay? I am very, very good. I'm not at pronouncing names, okay? I'm dyslexic and things like that. But I'm good at seeing an end result. I could, when, when, when I took this red brick house on, in my mind, I could see how it was going to look when it was done. I'm very good spatially at having a vision with my kitchen downstairs. I literally saw it in my mind and I built it. There wasn't any blueprints or plans or an architect. That's just what's in my mind. I'm very analytical thinking on things. And this is where things change and evolve in the world. From the time of the dinosaurs where they became extinct. If you do not adapt and change and evolve, it doesn't matter how big you are. You will be left behind. And all this stuff transpires right in front of us. Things transpire faster now because things are sped, sped up with the advent of computers and everything else that seems like technology is doubling and making these hap things happen even faster. And one thing that you're seeing here is the internet is becoming like the wild west this is like the gold rush and everybody is rushing to youtube and i think about eight years ago you had as far as cowboys content creators the dallas cowboys didn't even have a channel you had like me law nation vosh lombardi and shango were about the main ones that were there. You know, some of the other ones started there about the same time, you know, uh, 2017, 2018, and so on. To the point where now, traditional media is disappearing. And there's an arrogance of traditional media, people that have gone to school, that have been journalists, that have worked with the teams, and things that go along with it. And that's a totally different ball of wax. And it's not just sports media, it's news media as well. It's declining because technology has changed and where the money is going is changing as well. And so I saw something last night by one of my brothers from another mother, Jay Tuck. Jay Tuck, who does incredible things um, with his YouTube channel as well as on Twitter. You know, he is the new age, or as you say, new media. Now, some people will argue, you're not media. Well, if it's called social media, then it is media. Whether it's respected in the same way traditional media was, that's a different argument. But see, J. Tuck hit the nail on the head when he said, content creators are specialists when it comes to team coverage. You think Stephen A. Smith knows that Brett Ford or T.J. Bass or what's really going on with the team? The topics are very surface level and an in-depth idea they, uh, doesn't get spoken by them, which is true. They just kind of have the headlines, you know. A lot of times people, I, I literally heard a journalist say, well, you got Jerry Jones and what's the other guy? You mean Stephen Jones, the son, who is the president of operations, uh, the, the cat boy? You don't know that guy? You only know the top pieces, okay? You feel, oh, they lost Tyron Smith. Well, you don't know the other players that are underneath of there. You know, when the Cowboys lose a Dante Fowler, you don't know anything about Sam Williams or know that the numbers, if you equate that Sam Williams only had 26% of the snaps, Dante Fowler had 52, that Dante Fowler's eight and a half sacks, I'm sorry, six and a half sacks versus the four and a half sacks that Sam Williams, that Sam Williams potentially, if it equates right, is actually a better player that is younger and cheaper. You don't get that, which is part of the reason why. The next part of the equation is 
people want things quick and like you said specialized and you're seeing the media die and part of the reason is and i was looking at youtube statistics here's the main reason why you can look at it and see that it's dying advertisers can reach 2.53 billion users on youtube 59 percent of users <coughs> say that youtube ads are more relevant than tv ads because they can cater to you they get to know you and they're going to send you ads that are relevant to you okay for me seeing a, a you know feminine product ad on tv i'm not going to go out and buy because it's not something i deal with but if i'm seeing stuff about car repair if i'm seeing stuff about barbecue grills if i'm seeing things about game tickets and that's brought to me hey i may go ahead and buy and users are twice as likely to buy something they saw on youtube so now you have advertisers realizing our money is better suited going on youtube here's the other part of the equation the money spent in advertising on YouTube is a lot cheaper than money spent on ESPN. Which is better for me to do a production, ca you know, a you know, 30 second ad that I got to play on ESPN? Or is it better for me to say, let me give a product sample and say a thousand dollars and give this person a commission to do the selling for me to a YouTuber? dynamics i can spend the same amount of money but i can have people targeting and doing the work for me as opposed to reaching out and missing all these i want to read an article from the marketplace for sports fans the golden age of content is now so right now you know we're, we're we are sucking in so much content Right now, you look at how the draft was. You look at how OTAs. People, it's not that people aren't feeding the news. They're getting it differently. ESPN reported that multiple talk show programs set new viewership records last month. Athletes are producing podcasts and documentaries to give audience um, behind-the-scenes looks. A survey shows that around half of Generation Z sports fans use social media to expand their communications, communities while watching live events. But even with all this new content, the traditional sports journalism is slowly disappearing. The New York Times dissolved its sports desk. The Los Angeles Times laid off several sports reporters and stopped day-to-day -day coverage. Even Sports Illustrated announced mass layoffs prompting the question of its future. And we just saw this past week, Ed Waters' contract's not renewed. We know that NFL Network has basically been letting everybody go and looks to be buying a share of ESPN or allowing ESPN to buy a share of the NFL, which would be the lifeline that saves ESPN, which is actually kind of dangerous because that's kind of like state media where... ESPN may not always give you stories that may put things in the NFL in the bad light, so to speak. I also have a problem with ESPN being in gambling, but that's another story. So, you start to look at this and you start to see that traditional sports media, radio host, the top ones used to make, as Dan Salio said to me, that's my source, we're making 300000 a year. You're not finding those very many anymore. Now they're topping out at 120. Still great money, but those jobs are few and far between. And so as you see this decline in radio, in television, you're seeing this explosive growth on social media platforms now it doesn't always translate being a traditional media person to being a great social media one you have the name and the knowledge but it's a different game that you have to learn the ins and outs of doing 
So what you're seeing here now, it will be amazing, say, five years from now, as the NFL goes to, because the NFL, if you haven't noticed, is slowly abandoning the traditional platforms for covering their games. You're seeing it going more to streaming. YouTube TV, they say by 2026, two years from now, will have more viewers than cable, all the cable outlets combined. You're seeing the NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube. You're seeing, of course, now series on um, their platforms, Jerry Jones and everything else. You're seeing Netflix that's going to get Christmas games. You're seeing Paramount that's getting, of course, um, uh, playoff games. You see Amazon with Thursday night football. Another five years from now, you could almost envision that the only way you're going to see football and get your sports coverage is through social media. It's just the evolution of where it's going. So it's interesting to see, to see how all of this interacts. It seems like for more um, times than not, there's an animosity between social media people, the YouTubers, so to speak, versus the traditional journalists whose platform is dying. And I always think about movies, you know, where there's a species that's out there, their planet is dying. And so they look to find another planet to take over. And it seems like that's where we are right now. We have all of the traditional media people that their planet, that they've used up all the resources, that it's going to be extinct. And they're trying to come to this planet here, the social media one, and just take it over and figure everybody else just should just move out the way because we are the higher life form. We have more experience and more knowledge. Well, that may be true. But, bro, this is our space. We've been here. We live here. We're not giving this up without a fight. And so my point on this conversation is this shouldn't be a YouTubers versus traditional media fight where we're just the morons or the guys that can't get credentials. We should look at this as, how do we make this better? How do we marry your experience, your knowledge, your access with our interaction and following to make it better content for the fans out there and all become winners? That would be the thing that I would say I would try and do as opposed to trying to just take over. But then again, I'm just a YouTuber. What do I know? I'm an idiot. As always, I appreciate you guys. And um, we'll see you real soon. Peace out.